What's up guys, this is the coder here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really sorry that I've not been posting for a while, but you know, I'm going to talk I'm not going to even talk about why I'm not posting. You guys probably already know why I'm not posting. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to show you something really cool today. Okay, in this video, I'm basically going to show you um, an API, a really awesome API with which you can actually execute code on your website also. So, that's pretty ridiculous that you can actually execute code from your website so as you can see this is basically um, I'm firstly going to show you what codex is okay codex is one of my projects that I have been working on for the past couple of days and as you can see this is the code editor over here not the code editor this is how the interface looks like okay whenever you make a new class okay and as you can see I have a lot of Java code over here some uh, a C++ code to Python code and basically you know what these codes do is uh, execute so that's what they do and of course there are a bunch of other uh, things over here like you know new class expert and github well um, github is it basically takes you to the github repository of codex so this is how the github repository looks like I'm going to talk about this uh, in a while so yeah that's something and then we have expert over here expert is basically the parent app of codex you know and uh, with expert you can actually execute um, Java, HTML CSS and Java script code so as you can see this is calculator web over here I can just open it and you can see this is all JavaScript and HTML and CSS code so it's pretty cool over here you know HTML CSS and JavaScript so you can check that out export out and um, I've actually made a video of, about it so anyway you know um, this is what the interface looks like and of course you can in order to create a new class like this over here you can click on new class over here you can add, give it a class name like I'm going to name it hello world and now I already have a hello world Java over here so I'm just going to create a Python class over here instead so I'm going to make it using Python hello world so yeah let's just create a new class and once you create a new class you can see this is how the interface looks like and of course it's responsive so don't you don't need to worry about you know it not working on phones this is how it looks like on phones okay pretty cool it's really easy to use and um, of course you can just simply write over here your name okay and like of course you can make it work so I'm just going to print um, hello my name so yeah in order to do that I can just put over here hello and I and as you can see this is how it looks like literally two line code python code it's simple as hell and now i can just click on run over here and um, when you click on run you can see it asks for an input now over here as you can see we don't need an input okay but in case you have multiple inputs or even single inputs you can simply put it over here line by line okay and when you put any kind of input line by line it is automatically considered as multiple individual inputs so yeah that's i guess pretty easy to un um, you know pretty simple to understand you okay so yeah let's just forget about that and in case there's no input then you can just leave it blank and click on run over here and once you click on run you can see it takes uh, it loads and you can see it says hello jagrov and i can simply make this like coder okay so that i can say hello uh le coder so yeah you can see hello le coder so now you'd be like how is this working well it's using the codex api now for those who are wondering what is what the hell is the codex api well i'm going to show you what the hell is the codex api so just come to the home page of codex and click on github over here and once you click on github over here you can see that nice effect see it's material UI baby so as you can see this is the codex repository right over here on github okay and github get, well you guys did a great job making the dark mode it looks so hot but anyway so as you can see it is a uh, codex is basically a react app and um, you can see there's various um, things over here you know folders over here well if you want to make any kind of contributions you will you know you're welcome to any kind of contributions you can simply create a pull request fork this repository do whatever you want to with this and um, you know in the readme file you can see I have explained what codex basically is codex is an online compiler for various languages like Java C++ and Python now you if you're wondering how many languages it can execute well it can um, 
execute up to eight languages that is C++, C, C Sharp, Java, Python 3, Ruby, Kotlin and Swift. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It can execute a lot of, it can execute various languages, basically the ones that are most famous right now, you know, Java and Python. So yeah, they are pretty famous. I guess you already know that. And you can see, um, this is basically I have given the, you know, the people basically an introduction to what codex is now you don't need to worry about what codex is you know because you are a developer and you want to develop your own website from where you can execute code <laughs> so in order to execute code um, I'm going to present you the codex API now a code the codex API is basically this free API and as you can see I have said it there's no catch there's no catch okay and um, as you can see you can execute code and fetch output okay literally for free and this is the path you just need to create a post request in order to you know execute your code and these this is basically your payload this is gonna be your payload you can see um, I have explained it properly over here this is the code and this is it should basically contain the script that you need to uh, execute and then this is the language you know you can put a parameter over here like you know language name uh, so it would be language and then basically it could be Java CPP which stands for C++ of course and um, uh, then we have input so in case the script requires any kind of input for execution you can um, you know pass a, the input value right over here and in case you have no input at all you can just leave it empty you know you can just leave it empty and it, it would simply execute and um, then over here as you can see um, I have written what are the languages that are supported for execution you can see these are the languages basically so um, you know you can pass in these um, you know these strings uh, CPP or C or CS you know um, like respective to what language you are you want to execute using the API and um, you know I've basically um, explained a bunch of other stuff I've also put an example or a sample code that you can run using Axios in the back end using Node.js. So yeah, that's pretty cool as you can see over here. Okay, so yeah, this code you can use in order to run, uh, you know, the the API basically from your back end. Okay, and as you can see, the sample output is basically uh, this. Actually, you know, I have kind of changed it a bit. You know, I have made it even more detailed now. And you can see this is the output and um, yeah it's pretty easy to understand I guess now for those who still did not understand how this API works um, or you know for those who are who want to see an example request made using this API I'm going to show you how it works using postman now for those who don't know what postman is well postman is basically uh, a place where you can test API's so as you can see this is the API URL over here you know HTTPS whatever 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 and you can simply just copy paste this um, in your postman account as well and um, make sure you make a post request over here now of course there are many different kinds of requests that you can make but make sure it is set to post and um, then uh, this is basically the payload or the body that you need to pass in in the request in order to execute your code now as you can see right like, like I, I said over here you need three parameters code language and input and uh, code is basically you know the script that you need to execute so this is the script and then I have said you need the language so basically this is the language and as you can see it's just 5 plus 5 plus 6 over here the script contains only 5 plus 5 plus 6 so it does not need any input so I just left the input uh, part you know or the input parameter blank and um yeah well this is all that you need okay this is all the data that you need and then you can just simply click on send and once you click on send you just have to wait for a few like two or three seconds you know you can see yeah it's a bit slow api i understand but still it's pretty cool it it, it works okay and um yeah you can execute various languages using this you can actually put over here like if if this were a python code you could simply put py over here in order to execute the python code but i'm just going to leave it at java right now okay and as you can see over here um, this is what you get uh, the output like you know this is uh, let me just convert it to JSON yeah so now you can see it's easy to understand so the JSON part the, the basically the callback 
or the response kind of looks like this so you can see this is the source code basically what you wrote and then you have the status status is 2 which means it was a successful request and then the error code error code is 0 and then the output output is 16 so yeah as you can see i have wrote over here system.out.println 5 plus 5 plus 6 which is equals to 16 of course so 5 plus 5 is 10 and 10 plus 6 is 16 i hope you know that <laughs> and then you have the date over here you know and then you have the language you have the input now for those who are wondering why do i have date over here well you could actually you know make something like you know git over here you can add you, you can make your own git basically your own version control system and you can record you know the changes that happen in uh, every once in a while so you can simply just convert to the previous version and you understand you know like if you need these because you know i'm pretty sure you guys are going to create something even incredible than this you know you guys are probably going to use i don't know <laughs> you guys probably will make something much better than codex but anyway codex um, i made this website you know in order for you to understand how this api basically works okay you can um, browse through the code to understand how codex works how the api requests are made okay and um yeah this is the um you know th this is how it runs okay uh this is how uh, this is this was basically an exam example request that i made just for you guys to understand how it looks like how the output looks like or the response looks like and now i'm going to show you how the code for uh, in order to execute this whole thing looks like so you can just come to uh, you know over here in postman you can see it says code over here you can click on it and well it should show you the code but i guess i i need to just refresh the page because it's not working i don't know why so I'm just going to refresh this and uh, yeah there we go so as you can see this is the JavaScript fetch code and um, yeah you can run this on your front end however it will not run properly on your front end not run properly as in it might not run on your front end because you know the course policy is going to hit you it's basically the cross origin policy because you know your website will have a different origin than what my website has or what this codex web .netlify app has so of course the course policy is going to block this request and um, well you need to find your way through how you can you know basically avoid that and the easiest way you know to avoid these errors and you know just execute this api is to simply execute the code using node.js you know there are many different kinds of stuff over here the unirest uh, request i use axios request you know and you can see this is the axios request um and if you're writing a code in react or uh, you know anywhere in javascript if you are using if you know how to make requests using node.js you can of course use axios in order to execute this code but uh, you need to make sure that you are executing the code in the back end because you know uh, or else it will still like you know throw the course error um and uh, yeah that's in order to avoid that error there's only one way to avoid it that is you either need to use firebase functions or you need to use netlify functions that i'm using currently so um, netlify functions is something pretty cool you know you can just google it netlify functions docs and you can just you know read this whole uh, documentation over here and you, you will basically understand how you can also create um api requests from your netlify function you can see build with javascript there's there there's a lot of e it's really easy to understand it's not hard at all okay it's really easy to understand you just need to you know yeah it's really easy to understand all you know, that's all you need to know and um the good thing about netlify functions is that you can hide your api keys you can hide your um, api secrets and whatever you want to hide using these netlify functions okay so that nobody else can see your um you know api keys um so basically yeah there is a code that is running in the back end that is not here on github and well that is a secret basically that is shared between me and my laptop and only us know the code and of course netlify also knows the code so yeah how is the code executing on the back end well that's a topic for another video for now all you need to know is this is how this is what you can use this is the api the free api that you can use in order to execute code from your own website so it's pretty easy i guess you know i guess hope or i i guess hope i hope all of you guys understood 
what this API can do, what potential this API has, you know, you can simply visit it on GitHub. All of it is open source here on Jagger slash Codex. You can check it out. It's really rad. Yeah, so that's it for the video. You can see I'm still again going to execute this, you know, just for you guys to see. I can write over here. Well, I can just write over here. Hello world. I need to use backslash over here. Yeah. I can just type in hello world and then I can send this request and you'll see the output over here basically yeah there you go you can see the output over here it's hello world so see that's how easy it is that's how easy it is to make requests create requests and execute your code so I hope you guys understood how this code works you know thanks for watching guys okay thanks for watching I hope you understood how it runs okay so I expect to see many different and unique kinds of stuff that you make yourself and um, yeah thanks for watching this video again well see you next time again probably in a month I don't know